contribute and how to make all these two pictures one unique one. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, we can have more questions taken in the discussion session. Uh, Laura, I would request you to be there because I think there will be more questions. Okay, yep. so. Uh, right, thanks, I will be there. Thank you, thank uh, you. I'm, you're welcome. Uh, we'll stop sharing. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, our next speaker is Orindam. Orindam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you just share your screen? Yes, I'm sharing. Sure. Yeah, so is it visible? Yeah, can you make it full screen? Yeah. So it's okay, right? Okay, so our next speaker is Arinda. We are very happy to have him here. He is going to tell us about our matrix models with EMS3 constraints. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers and the supporting team for this wonderful conference. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about a matrix model with BMS3 constraints. It's based on this recent work that I did with Neetu. And here's a brief outline of the talk. I'll just introduce what BMS3, BMS3 symmetry is and where we find it. And then I'll talk about matrix models and how matrix models are related to a sort of infinite dimensional algebras through these loop equations. And then I'll talk about uh, how these BMS3 constraints can be imposed in a matrix model partition function through this free field realizations and how those constraints can be solved using CFT techniques. So we'll, uh, we'll solve them and find some partition function for a matrix model. And then I'll interpret that matrix model and give some future directions. So this is a very recent work that we are doing. So all comments and uh, ideas are welcome. So in the previous talk, Laura talked about asymptotic symmetries of gravity theories and how uh, these people in the 60s found an infinite extension of the bulk symmetry at the boundary. And although in 3D, the bulk dynamics is trivial, uh, the seminal work of Brown and Heno showed that for at least ABS3 cases, a similar extension is there. And later, Barnage compared and other people showed that this, uh, even in the case of 3D flat, asymptotically flat space times, there is a asymptotic symmetry algebra, which is infinite dimensional and which is this PMS3 algebra. And this is how the algebra looks like. These TNs are the super rotation modes and MNs are the super translation modes. And this algebra, uh, this algebra, this particular symmetry and its generalizations has played central role in understanding uh, flat space holography in 3D. So for instance, a lot of work was devoted to uh, writing 2D duals of this bulk gravity theory using the BMS3 symmetry. And they've also been related to Galilean conformal algebras. And it, this correspondence has been used to calculate the correlation functions, uh, BMS3 invariant correlation functions. And in recent times, BMS3 has also popped up in various other related places. So for instance, in the effective dynamics of black hole interiors, in a class of integrable systems, and even in, in the bosonic sector of tension districts. So this shows that this understand to understand this BMS symmetry more is a very interesting question to ask. On the other side is the matrix models, which are zero dimensional quantum field theories whose basic field is a random matrix. So for example, this is a partition function of a, of a matrix model where the integration is over some ensemble E and uh, the, the integration variables are all the uh, elements of the matrix. And this uh, action is essentially an effect, uh, effective potential, which is nothing but a polynomial in these matrices. But you can, uh, what will be particularly useful is the eigenvalue representation of this uh, matrix model. So what you can do is that you can diagonalize these matrices and write this partition function in terms of the eigenvalues of this matrix. And then, uh, then the Jacobian of this transformation sort of appears as a van der determinant here, which in, in general can come with some, some exponent beta. And depending on the beta, we call it a beta matrix model. And of course, matrix models recently uh, 
have been extremely uh, important for holography. So it, it was shown by these people that JT gravity, uh, the holographic dual of JT gravity is a, is a random matrix model. And there's, uh, there's been a lot of work uh, uh, throughout uh, where matrix models are related to integrable systems. And through loop equations, there's a special class of matrix models called conformal matrix models, which are connected to infinite dimensional algebras. And this is the connection we have to explore in this talk. So what are loop equations? So the partition function of matrix model that I showed, uh, it should remain invariant under a change of integration variable of this sort. And if you demand that, that puts some constraints on this partition function. And you can write those constraints as some differential operators acting on the partition function. And these, this is what we will call as the loop equation circuits. And the, what you can show is that for conformal matrix models, this complete set of constraints satisfies a closed algebra. Okay, so for instance, if you take the ensemble to be Hermitian ensemble, what you can show is that uh, these uh, differential operators satisfies Hirasov algebra, or rather uh, weight algebra because there's no central extension. And inversely, the, uh, what you can ask is that, suppose I know the algebra satisfied by the constraints, can I somehow work out what's the partition function uh, for this given matrix model? And the answer is yes, this, is recent to be, uh, this, has, uh, this was worked out in 90s by these people in a series of works where they started with a algebra, with a known algebra, and worked out the partition function for which the loop equations satisfies that as well. So in this talk, our objective is to find a matrix model partition function, which is dual to these BMS3 constraints. So the first step would be to, to find the set of differential operators, which will satisfy BMS3 algebra among them. And the second step would be then to solve these uh, constraints and write, a part, write down a partition function. And we'll ultimately write down a partition function in eigenvalue representation. So to do both these steps, we'll extensively use uh, techniques of 2D CFTs. And our starting point is the realization of BMS3 algebra through a two comma minus one beta gamma system, which was worked out in this video. So here's a brief uh, review of that. So the action for the bosonic beta gamma system is just this. But these uh, uh, the fields beta and gamma satisfies the OP of this sort, and if you write if you expand them in terms of modes, the beta is a spin uh, spin two field, the gamma is a spin minus one field. If you expand them, then the modes satisfy this sort of a commutation relation, and the stress tensor uh, of this uh, two comma minus one beta gamma system is this, which of course can be expanded in terms of modes, and what was shown is that the modes of this stress tensor along with the modes of the beta gives you a realization of the BMS3 algebra. I've written almost here, that's because there are, uh, uh, this doesn't give you the correct central charges. In order to have correct central charges, you need to twist this operator through some of, uh, with some del cube gamma term. But because central charges will not be important for this talk, I, I haven't discussed. Okay. So we have a realization of BMS3 algebra in terms of this uh, modes of beta and T. So in order to find the differential, uh, the set of differential operators, we use this commutation relation and we introduce these sets of uh, sets of operators, T's and del del T's and T bars and del del T bars, and expand the modes of, uh, expand beta and gamma fields in terms of these operators. So once we do that, in terms of these operators, we can we can find the realization of MN and TNs, which are the modes of uh, which are the uh, generators of BMS3, because we know that uh, these generators are nothing but the modes of stress tensor, and we can write now the now write the stress tensor modes in terms of these differential operators, and this gives us the necessary differential uh, operators that satisfies BMS3 algebra among them. So now that we have these differential operators, we now want to solve them. And we claim that a correlator of this form in, the, in this CFT, this beta gamma system, will solve these differential equations. Where we have these operators, and I'll define, I'll define them. This bra state is uh, defined through this operator H, and it has this property that 
acting the differential equate, uh, equation, uh, the differential operators corresponding to super rotation uh, from the left is equal to acting the modes of the stress tensor from the right. And similarly, the super translation operators from the left gives uh, the modes of beta n from the right. Okay. So that's how I'm going to define, uh, I'm going to find an operator h such that these conditions are satisfied. And once I have such a, uh, such a brass state, I'll also need to define a G, uh, uh, the ket state. And I define this ket state in such a way that it, it is annihilated by the modes of stress tensor and also the modes of this beta phase. Once I, once I have these two, it's, in, it's very easy to see that uh, then such a correlator will, uh, will solve these differential equations. Okay. So uh, for the first step for this, uh, to find this brass state, we propose this following operator, which in terms of the fields can be written in this form, where V and U are just some polynomials, and these are uh, the derivatives of beta and gamma fields. And we can just uh, do the math and check that this actually satisfies this property, that acting on, it, acting on this exponential of this operator from the left by, uh, by the super transition and super rotation is same as acting on it uh, from the right by modes of stress tensor or the modes of beta. So that's the first part of it done. And to complete the correlator, all we now need is to find the ket state. And the first condition on the ket state is that it is annihilated by the modes of the stress tensor, which tells us that uh, G, this, uh, this ket state is nothing but a function of some screening operators. Now, uh, just to, we review that the screening operators are operators with zero conformal dimension, but non-zero charge. And if you have a spin one primary in your system, you can construct these screening operators through this sort of an equation. And you can show that they are, they are annihilated by the modes of the stress tensor. Unfortunately, the two comma minus one beta gamma system does not have a straightforward spin one primary. So in order to find such a primary, we fermionize the theory. So you can you can write down uh, the beta gamma fields in terms uh, in terms of these uh, these fields. But phi is a bosonic scalar field, and eta and uh, chi are fermionic fields, which satisfies uh, this sort of OP among themselves. And then you can expand your beta and gamma fields in terms of these fields. Once you do this sort of expansion, now you have uh, because of the because of the presence of these bosonic scalar fields, you can now you now have vertex operators. So you can construct spin one vertex operators. And through these vertex operators, you can now define screening operators. So these are the two vertex operators. So there's a background charge uh, for two comma minus one beta gamma system, which, uh, which tells you that these two operators are uh, the uh, conformal dimension one. And through this, uh, you can define these two screening operators. And you can also check that these screening operators also commute with the modes of beta, okay? And thus, the ket state that we have uh, can be a general function of uh, function of these screening operators acting on the vacuum. Okay, so now we have the uh, bra state and the ket state. So you can now just write the partition function. And in terms of our fields, the partition function looks like this. So this is the exponential of uh, the, uh, the Hamiltonian operator that we uh, wrote down. And then these are basically just uh, some powers of uh, powers of these screening operators acting on vacuum. And you use uh, this sort of a formula for the exponential operators, and then we write down the partition function. Okay. So what uh, in the final expression, the partition function we write down this x's and y's are basically some polynomial uh, potential terms. And, uh, and these are the van der Mond determinants written here. So what we basically see is that these are, there are, this is a two matrix model. Uh, one of the matrix models is, uh, the eigenvalues of one of the matrix models is given by this x i's, and the eigenvalues of the other one is given by this y i's, and they're interacting through this del squared term in the van der Mond determinant. Okay, so yeah, so this is our result. We find that this is a, beta one, beta two matrix model, with two values of beta, and which interact to the measure of the partition function. And that the loop equations that we have, along with some topological regression equations, they constrain the correlators of this matrix model. So our next uh, 
understand what I'll we'll try to do next is to understand these these constraints from the side of the gravity. And as I mentioned, that uh, there is a lot of work inv involving gravity and writing the 2D uh, 2D dual of these gravity theories in flat space. So we want to understand how our matrix model is related to this. And uh, a quick note is that uh, in a recent work, Maloney and Witten has started investigating the relation between two plus one D gravity and random ensembles of two D CFT, and we want to understand the connection between our approach and these two uh, D CFT systems. Well. So thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you, Arinda. Uh, we have time for questions. Please uh, go ahead. Yes, Shovik. Hi. Yeah. So thanks for the nice talk. So, um, so the role of the say the algebra in say the Brewster algebra in a two D CFT, and uh, the role of these uh, constraints which you get uh, in the matrix model. I mean, the role of the algebra is very different in the sense that in the field theory, this is some algebra of some conserved currents, whereas right. in the matrix model, it is, these are some constraints for your partition function. That's right. So, um, I mean, since the roles are very different, I mean, uh, do you expect that this partition function which would shed some light on, on the field theory? I mean, the, the connection, uh, to me yes, the connection might not be that straightforward, of course, as you said, because these roles are very different. But the point is that both these symmetries play a sort of a similar role in the correlation functions, right? So the the Hirasura algebra, for instance, constrains the correlation functions through word identities and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and also these loop equations, uh, they also constrain the correlation functions that you get from the matrix model, partition function. So the point is to understand these constraints from, for instance, if you can, if you can interpret these constraints from the gravity side, that's what. Yeah, but I would still think that the uh, in the in the field theory, the word identities uh, which we get, I mean, those are like quite different in the sense that yeah, of course, of course, you, know, you don't see the central charge, and also since you have the modes of minus one and above only for the that's right, yes. yes. So the yeah, so maybe the connection yeah is, is yeah yeah that's right yeah the connection is not straightforward right yeah 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 and probably i mean since you mentioned the work of maloney and witten i mean over there uh, i mean the averaging which was done uh, that didn't have any direct relations with any matrix model actually that is true yeah. that is yeah so those theories were rational and it's not like i mean there is the random like since there is some averaging but i mean it's there is no direct relation with with any matrix model in that case yeah that is true. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Your expression for the TN are very complicated because uh, the, that is an artifact of the speci spe specific beta gamma system that you invoke to derive them. I'm right. just wondering, there are some other uh, simpler models in which the MN and the TN can have much simpler expressions which would, I think, uh, give a better handle on uh, trying to impose a loop equations or something like that. Uh, th th that is an excellent comment. I, uh, that's because I knew the, of this uh, free field realization from the beginning, so I started using it. So yeah, you're right. If there is some other system in which the expressions for, uh, uh, for this uh, super transition and super rotation modes look simpler, it will be easier to implement uh, these loop equations through that, system, through that realization. Thank okay, you. thanks. Yeah, just in addition to uh, Shomdatta's question, probably you can Arindam, try with the Liouville, actually. The, the flat limit of Liouville, right? That you know. That right, but the point is that I need a free field realization and free. Liouville theory is not, is not free field, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean this is actually uh, the in the flat limit, you can think of it as a free field realization, right? Oh, yeah, then, then of course you can use that. Yeah, I mean, we, for BMS, it should not be Liouville, it should be the flat limit. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, in that case, of course, it's well, we can use that to construct this. Uh, hey, Arindam, uh, thank Hi. you for the nice talk. Uh, so, going back to your beta gamma system, uh, right. am I right in saying that for you, the uh, CL is basically B at 26, I guess? And yes, yes. C2 is basically, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of a chiral model. It's a C2, CL, CM equals to zero. 
Right. So uh, I, I I think that when CM equals to zero, you can effectively sort of truncate the BMS uh, algebra into one filoso, right? That is true. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, so I'm just wondering that what exactly then your model. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I I understand you you probably did something with it. I mean, you twisted your uh, stress tensor in a way. That's right. Yeah. So the the point is that in order to get the correct central charges, all you need to do is you add a uh, operator del del cube gamma with this stress tensor with some arbitrary coefficient say a, and then you will see that that a will appear. in the in the op of t and beta so it will give you a central extension there okay okay the point is that when you are writing these uh, these things in terms of these differential operators these central charges don't play any role so it's basically like a classical version of the bm stress okay so right. both the central charges are set sure, right? sure of course right. Right. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so 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 in, in general uh, so can i so, so can i write this beta gamma system as something like a uh you know a chiral half of a conformal field theory which by constraints have this mns in embedded into them oh that's because, that's an interesting gamma, question yeah because these beta gammas are just like you know it's like p del x right you know right right so so can i uh it, it might it might be possible uh, yeah i i because you're saying because of the symmetries right yeah yes that's, that's uh, yes uh, i i think i think yeah it might be possible Thank you. Thank you. Just to just to add, uh, or it's true. I mean, it is not it, your BMS is not realized by beta and gamma, right? It is realized by beta and an operator in the beta gamma system, which is T. Right. So the modes 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 of T Z are is basically the T right. Ns and the, okay, right. right? Okay. So once sure. you get that, then you uh, you basically get uh, BMS completely uh, mm. after that twisting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, TRFR. Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I probably missed, uh, you know, the the motivation that you uh, uh, you know you mentioned. Uh, so so now that you have this matrix model, do you have a particular application in mind? Something along the lines of uh, the Sad Stanford Schenker or something? Uh, so yeah. So one of the things is like I said. So, so one of the things we are trying to understand is that if uh, if we have a, for instance, a two D CFT ensemble, like a ensemble of random two D CFTs, if that has any uh, connection, I mean, those two D CFTs has any effective description in terms of in terms of the matrix model that we just described. Uh-huh. That that is the first thing, and the second thing is to understand the uh, constraints on the part, uh, the constraints, these loop equations, which puts a constraint on the correlation functions of the matrix models. To yeah. understand those constraints uh, in the in the gravity in the three D gravity, so that's that's one of the questions. I see. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Arunam, I have one question. Ah, huh, sure. Okay, so um, you remember in yesterday's Tadasi talk, he was uh, trying to the, tr- trying to construct the holography for DS three, right? The theory right. of holography to DS three. So in that case, he basically started with uh, this partition function uh, with Chan Simon with AC two DS three. Right. But for so so if I want to do the same thing for flat space, we know that uh, here right. we. See Do not know like how to get that partition function, right? But isn't so even if I do not go till your matrix model, but mm-hmm. are you not writing a partition function which is BMS three invariant? You are right. That is true. Yes, I am. So, uh, so maybe this one can be used, and somehow we need to. I, I am just missing the. the yeah. Like, the the point is first of all uh, that part. Yeah, I mean, how do you inter? Uh, you're saying this is a BMS three invariant partition function, true, but whether this is a partition function, uh, whether this is the same partition function that that Takanagi was trying to write. No, Takanagi was definitely writing. No, I mean, I mean the flat limit of that. Yeah, flat. Yeah, yeah. So, but the th- I mean, what I'm trying to say say is that that somehow that now we have a partition function which has which is explicitly BMS three invariant is. I think is a new step, right? 